Richard Kimball. Profession, doctor of medicine. Destination, death row, state prison. Richard Kimball has been tried and convicted for the murder of his wife. But laws are made by men, carried out by men. And men are imperfect. Richard Kimball is innocent. Proved guilty, what Richard Kimball could not prove was that moments before discovering his wife's body, he encountered a man running from the vicinity of his home. A man with one arm. A man who has not yet been found. Richard Kimball ponders his fate as he looks at the world for the last time and sees only darkness. But in that darkness, fate moves its huge hand. <laughs> A QM production starring David Jansen as The Fugitive with guest stars Claude Akins, Joanna Moore, Wright King. Tonight's episode, Never Stop Running. Sure hate to lose you, Doc. What? Well, most of these field hands, they go. Nobody remembers them from Adam. A fellow like you. You got the uh, itchy feet, huh, Doc? I don't like staying in one place too long. Never in one place too long. That's the first rule for a fugitive. Always keep running. Always with the nightmare fear that one day the chase will catch up with him. One day, perhaps now. Ah, we got company. <laughs> he is in a hurry, all right. He's raising enough dust to plant an orchard. Come on, nobody's stopping you. you... What's all the hoorah about? I got a flat tire or something? Were you working the beet fields? You're the one they call Doc? Well, yeah, but that's a nickname. I used to drive an ambulance. Well, I've got a sick kid. They say you know first aid. Yeah, but that doesn't mean it. Well, Doc, we need you. It won't take long. Look, I told you I'm not a doctor. If it's serious, uh, there's a doctor in town. We've already called him. He's on an emergency. He's out. I'll pay you anything you ask. That's not the money. It's... Well, where do you want to go? The bus depot? I'll drop you off there later. Just look at the boy. What's wrong with him? We don't know. This morning he fell. All he did was scrape his arm. That shouldn't be serious. Well, that's what I mean. He... Bleeding a little. No broken bones or anything. It, what it is is he doesn't seem to want to move. He just lays there like he's half asleep. Dave? Is 
you going to help us? No, honey, please. I'm worried. I'm scared. It's not far. Only 10 or 15 minutes. It would mean a lot to her. Please? Please? I'm not sure I can help, but... It... Well, if there's no one else... Huh? Too far to the cabin now. A dirt road ahead. How old's your boy? How old? I mean. He's eight. He's eight years old. Helen. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just get so used to the radio, you know? Of course. Is there someone with your boy now? Oh, sure. My brother. But you wouldn't know it. Ralph is twice Dave's size, isn't he, Dave? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, from just above the 18th green in this $30,000 Sunland Open Golf Tournament, we look down to the threesome that includes I hear you. yesterday's first round leader and a man that seems destined to lead at the halfway mark. Of course, you know we're talking about 21 year old Harvey Grand. Sugar and spice and everything nice. <laughs> How about five mink and sable? Yesterday. If you're able. <laughs> you the doc? No, I told your brother I'm not a doctor. I couldn't get Dr. Goff. He knows first aid. Okay. And here. Now, I know what you're going to say. I look familiar. A lot of people look familiar. Before we see that, let's take a look at Johnny Post, 27 years old from Tacoma, Washington, who had a one over par 72. Ralph, please, there's still time. Call it off. Baby, you hold it down to a roar, will you? We got something coming up on television. You want to ruin the raid? And he's putting for a birdie here. Post is 15 minutes. He'll break just a little bit to the left. He'll play it on the right edge. Folks asked me to fix your arm. They're not my folks. They're not. So who are they? You can tell me.
What's your name? Jimmy. Jimmy. Well, Jimmy, maybe I better uh, better take a look at this. And... What's this? In case I get hurt, people will know I'm a bleeder. Ralph, that's a sick kid. He's a bleeder. Suppose he dies. Now, it's not too late. You can still call it off. If you don't like it, go. Get out. Get out? I'm hooked. The kid could identify me. Why'd you have to bring him here? Why'd you have to drag me into it? Okay, you don't like it. What are you gonna do? Blow the whistle on your own brother? Oh, I'd like to. I wish I could. Just this once. That's a birdie putt. He doesn't quite get it down. He settles for the par. That gives him a four over par round of 75. And a one. Now, you must have seen that. So? Well, sure. That's why we brought you here. Well, that boy's a hemophiliac. He's a bleeder. He might die. Relax. He won't die. Are you sure, honey? I mean, we uh, Take it easy, Bluebird. You're rushing the signal. You take care of him, huh? I'm, uh, I'm sort of counting on you. Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt this program to bring you a special appeal. Here it is, right on the dot, just like I said in the note. Come here, Doc. You're going to have a box seat. Here in the studio with me now are Mr. and Mrs. Harold Franklin, whose son Jimmy disappeared early this morning. It has now been established beyond all doubt that the boy was taken from his home. Now, Mr. Franklin, we understand that you've received a ransom note. Yes, we found it in the mailbox this morning. It's a great deal of money, but... Please I... take care of him. He's a hemophiliac, a, a bleeder. So be careful of him, please. I mean, don't let him fall or, or scratch himself because... Well, please... We're collecting the money now. And I hope to have it in the morning. But I insist on hearing from Jimmy himself. Do you understand? We now are going to show you the latest photographs taken of the kidnapped victim, Jimmy Franklin. You know how much I'm collecting, Doc? We're collecting, honey. We're collecting. My bluebird and me to fly away on. 200,000 clean, no tax bucks. 200 grand. If anyone has seen the boy within the last 24 hours, Please notify your local police immediately. Unless we hear from Jimmy, I will not accede to any ransom. I must be sure he is alive. Fix the arm. How do you know I wasn't asleep before? I had my eyes closed tight. Yeah, too tight. How'd you get this? When he pulled me over the wall. We have a big wall around our yard. And he's strong. Did you hurt yourself anywhere else? Any pain? Maybe we better check. This happened at the same time. It hurt. Don't you want to know how he is? Or don't you see anything in this bed but uh, Sable and Mink? Well, I don't blame this on me. It was Ralph's idea. A girl has to do what her husband says. And you're married? Well, of course I am. What do you think I am? A 
I'll be right back, Jimmy. Room service, Doc. Davey brought him in, but uh, don't overtip him. I don't want you to spoil him. Me and my kid brother, I kind of feel responsible. How's the boy? His name is Simmons, isn't it? Ralph Simmons? I thought I'd seen you. You know, everybody thought that you'd just about hit bottom when they kicked you out of pro football, but I guess everybody was wrong, right? I was framed. They never proved a thing. They never proved I was hooked in with the fixers. Weren't you? Ralph! You... Ralph, stop it! You're always ready with your fist! Now, let's be smart this time. We need him. He can be our ticket to South America. Remember, hot sun, white sand. You promised me, honey bear. You have it. Doc, the boy, how is he? I don't know how the boy is. The hemophiliacs, it's, uh, it's hard to tell. You watch for complications. Complication? Internal bleeding. Sometimes even the slightest bruise. What bruise? You think I'd hit a kid? You dragged him over a wall. He should be in a hospital under observation. You observe him! He's gonna sound right when he talks to his parents. I'll need some drugs. Yeah, like what? Coagulant. Something to stop the bleeding. There's a drugstore in town. Dave can drive me in. Yeah. Yeah, Davey could drive you. Right to the cops. You drive. Davey can go with you. What do you need, Doc? I'll write it down for you. No, don't write anything. Davey's a smart one. He can remember it. Vitamin K, it's a standard coagulant. Except that you may have some. Except something. what? Except that you may need a prescription. So give him one! I told you I'm not a doctor. If I go with him, maybe I can talk to the druggist. Oh, maybe she can talk to him better. But well, you just smile at the man, he'll give you anything you want. Come on. Oh, it's vitamin K. K like after J. What are you doing? I'm trying to get my shaving kit out of here. I thought maybe I could stop the bleeding with this styptic pencil. Sorry, I don't have anything for nerves. Well, go on! It'll sting a little. We're gonna keep this on for a while. It might get a little tight, but... Don't worry about it. I'll keep checking on you. Slide down. Get some sleep. Louis Pasteur. Come on, buy a drink. No thanks. Well, it's on the house. Not tonight.
How's the kid? Sleep. You should have seen his bedroom. Big enough for a bowling alley. How old would you say that kid is? Doc, seven, eight years? What's the difference? You know where I slept when I was his age? On the floor, with a burlap sack for a blanket. To keep from freezing, we used to scrounge lumps of coal from the railroad yard. And pajamas, did you see that kid's pajamas? You know what I had? You had a chance most men would give an arm for. Yeah, I know all about you. I read the sports page. Football scholarship. Big man on campus, all American. Yeah, you had it made. Anything I got, I paid for it. You quit school, didn't you? Well, a couple of props, they had it in for me. Well, wouldn't they lead a chair for you when you came into the classroom? Yeah, you quit school and joined the pros. All right, more chairs, more money. Now, I earned it. I broke my back for that kid's old man, and what did he ever do for me except sit in that meeting with a lot of the other owners and point the finger at me and get me kicked out? You got yourself kicked out, you and the gamblers. You were there, boy. Now, I look! Know, I know. You never had a chance. Where's the bathroom? I'll get you a crying towel. If I didn't need you, if I just didn't need you, Sure, vitamin K? That's right. I knew you uh, wouldn't want any vitamin A. Not with a uh, nice complexion like yours. Well, isn't that sweet of you? If I didn't have a date tonight, I'd... We're in sort of a rush, if you don't mind. Oh, uh, not a bit. Uh, just let me look. I didn't have any. I thought I'd uh, phone the drugstore over at Hastings. Well, it's not that important. Oh, it wouldn't be any trouble. We'll pick it up someplace else. Thanks, anyway. This is Walter Maddox. Is the sheriff there? Jimmy, let's take a look at your arm. Yeah, it looks okay, huh? Not bad. We'll leave this off for a while. Help your circulation. Say something, kid. Let's hear the voice. Am I going home? That's pretty good. It's not loud, but it's clear. Listen, when I get you to the telephone, you remember to say, I'm all right, Dad. Amy. Your turn. Changing of the guard. <laughs> Wish I had that vitamin K. I'm sorry. When I drug has started phoning around, I get scared. Level with me. 
You could have written that prescription, couldn't you? No. But you could have once. I can't remember that far back. I can't, or I don't want to. A man like you, educated, hiring out as a migrant worker. You're running, aren't you? Well, why aren't you? Why don't you get out of all this? You didn't have anything to do with the kidnapping, Jimmy told me. Maybe I'm trapped. Maybe I could use some of that ransom money. Maybe you're afraid of your brother. Why, because he's big Ralph Simmons? He is my brother. <laughs> you know what they say, blood is thicker than water. Yeah. Yeah, some of it is. And some of it isn't. Oh, that's all we have. Yeah? Yeah, it would have been easier if he'd have gotten a license number. Man. State police? Yeah. Here's a copy of the area alert. That's a real long shot. I mean, just because a couple people asked for vitamin K. And they got jumpy and wouldn't wait for it? And it is a coagulant? And we know that the Franklin boy is a hemophiliac? Now, look, let's just keep all the patrols out. Every car we got. We do have a pretty good description of the couple and the car they were driving. At least we've got some clues. I hope they're not as cold as that coffee. trap play. Except I'm too smart. Caught me on the head, grab the keys, and away you go. Besides, that bottle's still half full. <laughs> you don't want to waste all that good whiskey. Tell me something, Doc. Were you going to cut out all by yourself, or were you going to be a hero and take the kid with you? You shouldn't look at people when they don't know. It's not polite. Now you stop there. You're fine. Now you want to go home, don't you? Well, you won't if you keep acting like a baby. Now you say it. I don't hurt. Say it. I don't hurt. You're fine. Say it. I'm fine. Pretending like that. Trying to scare me. Trying to do me out of my trip. You 
know where we're going. South America. Ralph says once we get down there, they can't bring us back. Cops are nobody. Do you know how much $200,000 will buy? It's like a million here. Emeralds and diamonds. And it's worn all the year round. Swim every day. Honey, I have a bikini. Well, talk about a good neighbor policy. Now, you just be a good... <laughs> It's all right. How long has he been complaining? Complaining? I... Easy, Doc. You'll scare him. He's already scared. Why didn't you tell me, Jimmy? Jimmy, don't be afraid. Now, why did you hide the pain? She said that if I cried, I couldn't go home. Well, you'll go home, Jimmy, no matter what she says. All right, so he's got a bruise. So what? Everybody gets banged up once in a while. Not just everybody. He's a hemophiliac. Bruise can mean internal bleeding. He needs a hospital. He needs it now. No hospital. There's one in Belinda, right off the main. We'll wait. What, till he dies? Now, you get something straight. I got 200 grand riding on that kid, and until I get it, he goes no place. Not the hospital, not home, no place. Only to that telephone. Dave! You keep an eye on him and that kid. It looks like they stopped here yesterday, asked for a doctor. Any identification on them? No, sir. Strangers. No doc here, so they hightail it off. The state police want that area roadblocked while they run a house to house. Unit 4, take intersection of highways 106 and 22. 106 and 22. Okay, we're on our way. The ice, Jimmy. You think it'll help? Well, that's why we're doing it. I have some more ice.
How long ago? I'll let him go, oh, Ralph. You've got a fat chance. Come on. Come on. Come on. Okay. Hello? Hello? They could be anywhere. Find him. We'll find him. He's got the kid with him. Don't look at me. Look for him. I use your telephone to call an ambulance. Raus, go! How about using your pickup? Maybe you could drive us to the hospital. <laughs> hospital? Is there anyone else in the house? This is a sick boy. He needs a hospital. Nice hospital. Night. Kein hospital. Raus, go! I I'll send the door for you. I'll send the door. No, they won't. Yes, they will. We'll walk right into them. Linda, that's where the hospital is. 
Should be smooth from now on. No more bumps, you all right? I'm okay. I put you down, can you walk? That's the police. There are reasons why I... Well, they see me with you. I can't walk. You said the hospital. You gotta take me. You, you gotta. All right, get down on the floor. Cover up with the blanket. German woman bought the Gower place. She's screaming about someone stealing her pickup truck. That's not for us. No, but she said something about a man looking for a hospital. A man with a boy wrapped in a blanket. <laughs> Jimmy, we're here. It's the hospital. You just hang on for five minutes. We'll have more doctors around you than you can count. Pasteur. Belinda Hospital, you call the signals yourself. What took you so long? We've been here 10 minutes and we took the back road to get around the roadblock. You'll never make it. Why don't you just go over in the car and get in? You must be out of your mind trying to get him back. Right here in the middle of town. This boy, look at his color. You know what that means. Oh, no, he's sleepy. You see that door, Jimmy? That's a hospital. Go on and walk right through that door. Go on. You're 
out of your league. Oh, Jimmy, get in the hospital. Go on. Waiting for a red carpet. I turned it off, Ralph. You hear? That big spotlight, they turned it off. You're not a football hero anymore. Face it. Why can't you face it? Why don't you come with me? You don't need me, Jim. Will I ever see you again? Yeah, sure you will. Where's the boy? The boy? Come on. He's in the car. He's in the trunk of the car. Come on, I'll tell you. Internal bleeding. Well, don't just stand there, nurse. Oh, medic alert. Yes, sir. Jimmy, we got them, you know. They're in jail. Yes, sir. You'll be asked to tell what happened. Jimmy, this, um, this doctor, the one who brought you here, we can't find him. What about the migrant camp? We checked. The name he used there was a false one. He's disappeared, son. Can you, um, can you tell us anything about him? His, his name? No, sir. I remember. It's Pasteur. Louis Pasteur. Another path, another road. Roads that twist and wind and lead nowhere. Richard Kimball, fugitive. 